Hey, welcome back everyone to your Oracle SQL Developer Tutorial. And where we left off in the last Oracle SQL Developer Tutorial was we were creating a table. And we basically set up this structure, but we haven't done anything with it. Just to prove to you that it works, let's run it. Oh, whew. I actually didn't run that ahead of time, so I was hoping it would work. Okay, so it's created, but let's say you want to go back here and, you know, change something. Maybe you want this to be called user underscore name. Well, this is going to cause an issue, because when we run it, it says, oh, this already is used. So how do you get around that? Well, as you get into some more advanced SQL commands, you can actually edit tables that already exist. That's probably the recommended way once you really get into things. But when you're just learning, you can actually just delete this table and then create a new one. So to do that, I'm going to go up here and space this down. I'm going to use the command drop table and then put the table's name. Now, please don't try this at work. <laughs> okay, let's run it. All right, so looking down here at our results, we see table users drop, table users created. So you can see I actually ran two commands at once. And the way I did that was using this semicolon. This is known as a delimiter. It's the way we tell Oracle that what comes before it is a command and what comes after it is a command. If we had more commands, we could put a delimiter here and keep writing. Come on, <laughs> of all times. Now that we have the ability to drop the table and re-add it, we can reconsider the table structure. Now, once you actually have data in your table, you're not going to want to do this because it's going to delete all the data and start you fresh. <laughs> but for now, since we're just learning, it's totally okay. The rest of this video is going to focus on constraints. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to get rid of some of these columns just so we can focus on what's really important. So right now we're just creating a table with one column and all it is is a user ID with the data type number. Now, if we want to add a constraint to this, we can just put a space and then put whatever the constraint name is. So we could say not null. That is an example of a constraint and that one is going to force every single row to have a value for the user ID. But what if you want to add another constraint? For example, what if we want to make this user ID unique? Well, it's simple. You just put a space and you put unique. And there's actually not even any kind of order that you have to put these in. You could make it unique, not null. That's totally up to you. Now, when you throw constraints in after the column like this, a lot of people call these attributes. So these are attributes of the column. And in this situation, we are applying the not null and the unique attribute to the user ID. Well, this might be a good candidate for a primary key because primary keys are always not null and they're always unique. So if we didn't want to do it this way, we could make it a primary key but just let's try it and make sure it works. And you can see no errors are thrown. It works great. And we can go over here to our database, open it, click tables, scroll down to find our table. Ignore all these uh, random tables that I was working with. <laughs> Double click users. And you can see that we're forcing it to not be null and it has to be unique. So that's kind of a way you can look at a table and see what constraints they have. Let's go back though. Instead of having the not null and unique constraint, I'm going to make this a primary key. And it's super easy. All you got to do is say primary key. That's it. There we go. There's another attribute you might want to use for some columns. That's default. Now, I'm not going to give the primary key a default because primary keys, by definition, are all supposed to be unique. So if we defaulted to a value like 12, we that would be stupid because then multiple rows would be trying to insert the value 12. So we're going to create a new column. I'm going to name this account balance. And you can just imagine this being for some kind of website that you have to pay money or something. It doesn't really matter. And we're going to make this a uh, number as well. And then we're going to set a default to zero. So by default, the person has no money in their account. This is a good column to add the default attribute to. And you can see when we run this, it should work. Awesome. I confess, as I was studying constraints, I uh, went to the Oracle Docs page and I noticed that default is not one of the constraints listed here. And if you go back to this and go to your table and do a refresh, it doesn't show up as a constraint either. 
I'm not entirely sure why because it seems to work the same way. My first guess is that it's not a constraint because it doesn't actually prevent you from putting any certain kind of data in. All it does is help you put data in in case there's no data put in, if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> but I'm not sure. So if anybody knows, maybe you could shed some light on that and let me know in the comments. What we've done in this video is actually really cool, but some people like to name their constraints. They want to be able to reference a specific constraint by name. Now, when you do this, you actually get a default name. If you go back to this table here, you can see that this is the constraint name, but that's not very user friendly. So you can actually give it a name yourself. With the way we have things set up here, we can't do that. So in the next video, I'm going to be teaching you how to create named constraints. Be sure to check that out. And if you love these videos, please be sure to subscribe and share them with everybody in the entire world. <laughs> Thanks guys. And I will see you in the next one.